Golden showers always require context. Yes. Later today, Brazil's President Jair Bolsonaro will visit the White House for the first time. Bolsonaro is a right-wing firebrand whose controversial ideas, shrewd use of social media, and combative relationship with the press have won him the label, the tropical Trump. How useful is that label? What's in store for the two largest economies in the Americas? And why is the Brazilian president curious about, and let me say it because he said it, golden showers? To sort that all out, I'm pleased to be joined by Roberto Simon, a veteran Brazilian journalist who is now Senior Director of Policy at the Council of the Americas and Politics Editor at their flagship publication, Americas Quarterly. Roberto, thank you very much for joining us. Thanks for having me, Alex. Roberto, what are, say, three things that President Bolsonaro is looking to get from his visit with President Trump today? I think number one is the image of him visiting the Oval Office and looking presidential. For, for his core constituents, it's important to you know, see him uh, in the United States, in Washington, embracing Trump uh, and, and you know, looking very presidential. Uh, but also, it is a way of validating his pro-market agenda, right? Mm -hmm. Coming here, speaking with CEOs, being embraced by the market to a certain extent here, I think it's also key for him. And also, I would say that for Venezuela, and the whole dynamic in, in South America. Mm -hmm. uh, we've seen quite a change in policy in Brazil regarding Venezuela, and to have the United States support, cautious support, if you will, it is also re really important. President Bolsonaro has been compared a lot to President Trump. They share a certain, let us say, stylistic approaches to politics, mm -hmm. um, to the point that Bolsonaro has actually been called the tropical Trump. What's one way in which you think that's a useful way of thinking about Bolsonaro? And what's one way in which maybe that's not such a useful way to think about him? Right. Well, the story has, you know, a lot of resemblance in the sense that we're talking about uh, an anti-establishment leader who made a presidential campaign against, you know, kind of a drain the swamp type of, of campaign and was dismissed, dismissed at the beginning by uh, pundits and you know traditional media and then ended up uh, winning the election so kind of the story you know resembles a lot what happened here in the United States and by the way that's not a coincidence I think the, the Bolsonaro family and Bolsonaro himself they borrow a lot of things from the Trump playbook right mm -hmm. in terms of dismissing climate change as a Chinese hoax or you know talking about bilateral trade more being more important that you know multilateral or you know, transnational and the uh, press as an enemy of uh, the of press the is an enemy of, of, of the biggest enemy of the people and yeah. so on so forth uh, why we're dealing with you know very different phenomena at, this, at the same time I think Brazil is extremely different from the United States in terms of how globalization was beneficial to Brazil right mm -hmm. in the sense that Brazil you know six or seven mm -hmm. decades ago was an agrarian economy with Ill illiteracy rates at 50 percent and mm -hmm. globalization helped Brazil you know bring uh, or make millions and millions of people emerge out of poverty and gain access to sanitation education healthcare, and so on and so forth mm -hmm. what I'm saying is the anti-globalist argument in Brazil has clear limits mm -hmm. and I don't think it resonates as much as it does here in the United States last question uh, the world awoke uh, I guess almost two weeks ago to a um, very curious tweet from the Brazilian president. He uh, tweeted in Portuguese, what is a golden shower? Now, can you explain to us a little bit about why the Brazilian president suddenly has such a pressing curiosity about this particular uh, subject and what that tells us about what's happening so in Brazil? So first, I, I never imagined myself talking about golden shower in EGT. I, <laughs> so, I, mean, yeah. I have to say that. Yeah. But, uh, well, the, the context when, where, uh, in which this tweet emerged, I think, is important. So basically, it was during Carnival, and you had some spontaneous demonstrations against Bolsonaro in Rio and in parts of Northeast Brazil. And then Bolsonaro tweeted a video of a golden shower, and it was a way for him to portray those demonstrations as something, you know, belonging to the extreme left for the quote-unquote gay agenda in Brazil and so on and so forth and to portray the whole dynamic in the cultural war through the cultural wars lens. Mm -hmm. And cultural wars are kind of the cat catalyzing element now in Brazilian politics, both on the right and the left. Mm -hmm. uh, and for Bolsonaro, it was a, a key instrument for him, and has been a key instrument for him to mobilize his base. Mm -hmm. uh, 
so that's kind of the context of the golden shower, although that sounds really bad. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that's uh, how it was. Golden showers always require context. Yes. And we're glad to have you here to give us that necessary context. Uh, <laughs> thanks very much again, Roberto Simon, uh, politics me. editor of America's Quarterly and senior director for policy at the America's Society. I'm Alex Clement from Signal. Thanks for tuning in.